Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be taking a look at the DJI compatible HD FPV CADEX Vista. This is the production version and I don't usually do unboxings but I think in this case it's important because if I flip the box over there is something interesting written on it. As you can see it says manufactured by Shenzhen DJI Technology Co Limited. So even though it's a CADEX FPV brand branded product DJI have actually made it and I see this as a good thing because as much as I love CADEX cameras their production factory is a little bit dusty so you can expect DJI quality with this product. If I take a look at what's inside we have the camera which is almost identical to the one that comes on the larger air unit except we have this black backing and the harness to the main board isn't as protected as the air unit and it's more reminiscent of the CADEX hybrid and split cameras. It does have some stress relief on the camera side though and on the Vista side the connector is also clipped down. The harness is shorter at 70mm compared to the harness on the air unit which is 105mm. The idea of the Vista is to be smaller and lighter. When I talked to CADEX it was being marketed as something for micros but of course there are a lot of people out there who run 5 inch models with the air unit but they are running a Hero 7 or Hero 8 for the HD recording so that they can use HyperSmooth and SuperView. So the Vista ticks both boxes because with its antenna it weighs 31 grams and the air unit weighs 50 grams. The Cadex Tarsier weighs 19 grams so it's a little heavier than the analog 4k capable hybrid cameras but luckily all-in-one ESC and flight controller boards have gotten smaller and lighter as well so I think we are going to see a lot of Bynum flies released with this Cadex FPV system. The Vista is much more build friendly than the air unit as well by having 20x20 20 20 mounting holes. From an FPV perspective you should get the same experience that you get from the air unit. There are a few downsides though the biggest one being that it doesn't record onboard footage which would have been great for micros so you can only use the recording from the goggles but because it's recording the live FPV feed the video can drop its quality or skip frames when the signal starts to get low. I do wonder if that will change at some point though because if you plug the Vista into a computer while it's powered up it shows as a 4 gigabyte mass storage device which isn't a lot of space for video but it's enough for a couple of flights and it's also how you unlock the unit's power by using the NACO.txt file if you're allowed to do so. Now I covered how to do that in my initial review of the DJI system so I'll add a card if you want to go and watch that. Personally I wouldn't do the 1 watt or 1200 milliwatt mod on either unit. There's a reason DJI limited it to 700 milliwatts and even if you have what they now call auto temp control turned off, if the unit overheats it still has an automatic thermal shutoff for damage limitation. The power limit is there to ensure that the units never overheat in the first place but it does have a redundancy if it overheats in the air. I learned this when doing the power testing for my antenna video. And with the Vista having even less thermal protection than the air unit, it's more likely to switch into low power mode more quickly, especially as we approach the summer. So if you are pushing 1200 milliwatts and it very quickly loses signal, there's a good chance that its thermal protection has cut in. And I know at this point people are going to be ready to hammer the keyboard and say I've done the 1200 milliwatt mod and aren't having any problems and if the cooling is enough then you won't but it's also important to remember that when you measure power output in milliwatts the scale is not linear so the difference between 25 milliwatt and 700 milliwatt is significant but the difference between 700 milliwatt and 1 watt is negligible. 1200 milliwatt you may see a slight increase but then when you couple that with the four mile hard limit cutoff thanks to the two-way communication that this system has I'd say it's not worth the risk. Now I would recommend having auto temp control 
always turned on. But when it is turned on, you'll find that you can't record any DVR or the recording shuts off really quickly and you'll get a message through the goggles saying something like low power mode, unable to record videos. But it's simply because the Vista is piggybacking off the Air Unit technology. And because the Air Unit has onboard recording capabilities, it starts to heat up when the recording starts. So it disables the functionality in both the goggles DVR and the air unit. What DJI needs to do is separate that out. So if you go into the recording settings and select to record just the goggles and not both, the recording could continue. But for the moment, the Vista will heat up pretty quickly and trigger the low power mode, which will shut off the goggles DVR until you arm it and get in the air. You can turn the low power mode off so that it's always recording on the ground, but I wouldn't recommend that. So onto the antenna, and you might be wondering why the air unit has two antennas and the Vista only has one. Well, I covered this in my DJI antenna video, but the air unit has two antennas because it's using a technique called Cyclic Delay Diversity, or CDD for short. It's the digital version of Diversity by sending a second delayed signal in case the first signal received errors. For example, by multipathing reflections, which in the digital world world causes something called intersymbol interference and in the analog world we call it flickery things in the screen. <laughs> so only having one antenna means that it's not going to have this digital diversity solution and might not perform as well indoors where multipath reflections are going to be bouncing off the walls as well as interference from Wi-Fi and things like that. They have included a rush left-hand polarized antenna though, which will reject some of those reflections like our analog systems do. So it will be interesting to see how it performs indoors. As you can see, the antenna doesn't come connected to the main body of the Vista out of the box. It's using a micro UFL connector, which I have to be really careful with because you only get a few goes at attaching and detaching them before they start to deteriorate or even break. You do that by unscrewing this clamp, but be sure to put the clamp back in place because it stops the connector popping off in a crash. You do have to solder up the wires to the board yourself this time, which is a little tricky, so it's best to solder from the underneath. The good news is that they are all the same connections as the original air unit, including using DJI's own controller, and it accepts up to a 6S voltage this time instead of 4S. Lastly, you're given a manual, but you aren't given any standoffs for mounting it to your model, so you'll have to source your own, and they are M2 mounting screw holes. Now, what model do I put it in? Well, I wanted something small that I could fly inside because it has rained constantly all year in the UK, which you may have noticed has affected my video output and also my income. So if you enjoy my content, then there's a link to my Patreon in the video description. Anyways, unlike the launch of the air unit, this time there were frames already being shipped to me as if everything had all been planned. So my favourite Cinewoop from last year was the Gep RC Cine Pro 4K and I'm so glad that I don't have to tear it apart now because Gep RC have released the Rocket, which I'll do a separate review on, but let's get this thing in there and try it out. Looking from the top, we've got the S-Bus solder pad, which you can either use for normal S-Bus or S-Bus through the DJI controller, or what DJI are now calling fast S-Bus instead of HDL. Then we've got the ground pad for that. Then the TX and RX pads, which you would solder the reverse to the UART on your flight controller. Then there's the ground pad and hiding underneath the antenna clip is the V-BAT. The next thing that I need to do is tin up all of the wires which are pre-soldered to the all-in-one flight controller from Gap RC. But these two wires here, they've been budged. I think they rushed it knowing that this product was coming out because there's two little solder pads there and you'll see in a little while they lifted off 
one of them. Anyways, I'm turning up the Vista unit from the underneath, ready to solder it up. But as I was moving the wires to solder them, you can see that the white wire, which is also the wrong colour, actually isn't there anymore and it lifted the pad up. It is soldered that delicately and I was lucky because there's a TX pad over here so I soldered that but there's no RX1 pad so luckily that stayed in place and it still worked. Anyways this is me soldering in the VBAT and then the ground wire and the white wire which is the wrong colour according to the schematic so that's the TX from the flight controller and it goes to the RX on the Vista and then the yellow wire which should be white that is the RX from the flight controller going to the TX to the Vista then this is the ground for the signal wire and that's the signal wire going in for S bus so the next thing to do is untighten the screw so that we can clip the antenna on. This is really tricky but you have to move the clip out of the way. And then the next thing I need to do is feed the antenna through to the back of this rocket model and it just wedges in there. You get a click when the micro UFL connector is in place and it's really tricky this to put back. There is a clip that you have to make sure is in place. I'm just pointing to it there if you can see it. So it says on the camera the way up that it's meant to go but if you do get it wrong you can flip it. Now I could only reach two of the screw holes and there should be four on this. I'd have to completely remove one of the protectors to get that in. This is also quite tricky so this is the top plate going in and there's just enough room for these little nuts to screw on there so I use my fingers to tighten them up and then a small socket to do the rest of them. So then the top plate has to carefully be put in place and all of those get screwed in so it's dry weight with the battery strap is 125 grams and also the rubber mat then with a 4S that's 207 grams that's 650 milliamp 4S that I'd use with this one and 650 milliamp 3S for indoors 188 grams there's just a couple of things that you need to do in beta flight. The first one is turn the MSP on for whichever you are. You connected the TX and RX up to the Vista. In this case, it is UR1 for me. And if I go into the configuration, I'm going to keep it as S bus. Even though I'm going to be using the DJI controller, S bus will still work. And if you want to use what they are now calling Fast S Bus, which they called HDL earlier on, all you have to do is put this command in and press enter and then press save. But I'm not too bothered about trying this HDL or Fast S Bus. I'm just going to use the usual S bus. So that's all that you need to do in beta flight. Once you've done all of that, you need to download the latest version of the DJI Assistant FPV series and plug a full battery into the quadcopter and then plug the quadcopter into the computer via a USB. It's interesting that it says air unit light, isn't it? We need to activate it. So I'm going to press a bunch of buttons there and there's some terms and conditions that you need to read. Don't worry, I'm a quick reader. They are worth reading though. So yeah, another set of those and tick the box and next so it's activating and it says complete then it asks me to take a survey and I press cancel sorry DJI we have to do an update now and it downloads it and updates it takes forever so I've sped it up you also need to update your controller and your goggles and everything which is a little bit of a pain but this is interesting I was looking at the release note and it says coming in the next update ability to view HDMI live broadcast by connecting the goggles to the DJI smart controller that's that big thing that costs a fortune. So yeah, it does look like they are coming out with a way to have HDMI out. I hope they come up with a cheaper solution than that smart controller though because it costs an absolute fortune. So let's take a look at a flight. 
One of the things that excited me the most when I heard about the Vista being released was the fact that I could put it on a model similar to the CinePro 4K, which is my favorite CineWoot because I could fly it indoors just like this. And that is the case with the Rocket with the Vista. So I'm actually standing outside the house to sort of simulate this being a bando and I think I clip the chair there. So yeah, it's a little bit of a big model really to get into those tiny gaps, but you can do it. And if we look at the on-screen display, so this is actually the subtitle file that is produced when you record from the goggles and I have arranged them in a way on the screen so it doesn't come like that and you can see that the delay 28 22 milliseconds it's around about that and it doesn't really get any worse than that and then the bit rate 25 megabit now i am in the furthest room back from where i'm standing and the delay 22 milliseconds and still 25 megabits per second you cannot trick this thing out it's absolutely superb and i'm thrilled and a nice shot of my pride and joy there and that shows you how much trust i have in this system because that guitar costs more than my car so i'm just flying around here and you know we've got other things on the screen as well so i should say i'm flying with a 3s 650 milliamp hour battery and you can see where it says fly min there it's doing it in seconds i wish it did it in minutes so the total flight time with this battery was four minutes 55 which is really impressive so we're just going upstairs here and the light gets pretty low and it's also flickering as well because of the light frequency but I could still fly. I mean, you know, it wasn't the highest of quality. Still better than analog, though. I think I clip the side of the staircase as well. But that's just because of the size of the model, not because of the latency. I mean, look at the delay there, you know. We are going from 28 milliseconds to 22. Yeah, it's variable, but I cannot tell whatsoever when I'm flying around. It's just like I'm flying analog, except I'm not getting any breakup whatsoever. No focus mode on here either. It's not needed in small spaces. And I was worried, like I said earlier, about this thing struggling indoors and it is thriving indoors so no problems with multipathing and signal interference it is just behaving amazingly so yeah i'm flying around my very expensive guitar again and not having any issues as you can see i'm a little bit wobbly because you know, I'm a nervous flying around this thing. You can see the reflection of the quad in the TV there. But yeah, this thing is my favorite model, I think, at the moment because it's constantly raining, so I can fly it indoors. And as you probably saw a few days ago, I posted a teaser video of me chasing the drift cars and I'll put that at the end of here if you haven't seen that as well because I'll add all of these statistics on there because in that situation it has the worst multipathing because it's a metal building and when we fly analog it's just so much break up. So I like to dynamically stretch my footage so it's been recording in 4x3 but I like to dynamically stretch it so that we get an ultra wide field of view so that's just my personal preference. You do lose a bit of quality doing that because it is recording in a lower resolution than the full size air unit so if you want to retain the quality then you want to keep it in 4x3 but if you go 16x9 it's going to cut the top off the picture so that's not great for flying indoors or flying in general. Anyways, let's take a look at our battery. So yeah, it's time to land.
So here we are at the indoor sports hall. This is part of a video that I posted a couple of days ago. But this time we have got the on-screen display showing. And of course the Vista doesn't record any audio. So there is a camera sat next to me and that's recording the audio of the car and also the quad as well. So I guess you could say that is a downside because the air unit when it records on board it records the audio but then again if you were to stick this on a 5 inch then your GoPro would be recording the audio or whatever HD camera you are using but I was amazed that I was getting really good results in here because when I fly analog there's just so much breakup in this place but if we check out the delay again it's just hovering you know around about 22 milliseconds up to around about 29 milliseconds in the bit rate 25 megabit absolutely perfect and stunning I was actually amazed how well the cameras performed in these lighting conditions as well because it's artificial lighting all right the lights on the roof are a little washed out but that is the case with analog and unfortunately I haven't had the chance to fly this system outside yet because it has just been raining for weeks but I can't wait to do that because I think we're probably losing some quality as I switch into the dynamically stretched view there yeah I think the quality will be even better when I fly outside with it getting a little bit of pixelation just because of the low light but yeah, this product gets my thumbs up. I have been so excited the entire time to make this video. It's taken a while, it's taken about a week or something like that. So if you have enjoyed this video, then I'll put a link in the video description to my Patreon because it would really help me out and it's becoming really, really difficult now to generate any income from this whatsoever so I would really appreciate that look at my friend Phil he's great he actually did RC cars when he was younger so he is drifting this thing like a champ I have got a lot to learn but uh, yeah that's something that I want to get into because I found it really enjoyable anyways I'll put a link in the description if you wish to get one I mean it would be rude not to and also the rocket from Gep RC. I haven't flown it outside, but flying it indoors, it just seemed superb. And spoiler alert, it's lighter than the Gep RC Cine Pro 4K as well because it's got that all in one board. But I won't come to any conclusions until I've flown it outside. I'm using all stock antennas on the goggles in here. But when I was flying in the house standing outside, I was using the two stock antennas on the top. But then two Menace Pico patches on the bottom, which I think is the ideal antenna setup in general for this system. Anyways, that is my review of the Cadex Vista. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers.